Every log profile is different. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can expose as well as color grade Canon C-Log2 footage in Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna start right now. Canon C-Log2 is by far my favorite Canon log profile, giving you the most amount of dynamic range versus any other Canon log profile, as well as giving you the most amount of flexibility and freedom when it comes to changing exposure, as well as color in post-production. But there are a few things that you guys need to be aware of before you go ahead and start filming in Canon C-Log2. First of all, not all Canon cameras can actually film in Canon C-Log2, and it's all down to dynamic range. You see, Canon C-Log2 actually requires a camera that can capture up to 16 stops of dynamic range, and currently, there's only a few cameras on the market can actually do that. Like, for example, my Canon C70, or the Canon C300 Mark III, or even the Canon C500, or brand new cameras like the R5 Mark II or Canon R1. So before you go ahead and start looking in your settings for Canon C-Log2, make sure that your camera is on the list. Otherwise, you're gonna have to film in another log profile, like for example, Canon C-Log or Canon C-Log3. Now, when shooting in Canon C-Log2, you need to be aware of the base ISO, which is ISO 800, which actually is identical to Canon C-Log3 base ISO. Now, when filming at 800 ISO, you're gonna get the greatest amount of dynamic range. In an ideal environment, you're getting up to 16 stops. So try and film at ISO 800 in most, if not all cases. If you shoot below 800 or above 800, you're not going to achieve the perfect footage and you might get a little bit more grain than you were expecting. So to balance that with the amount of light reaching the sensor, try and use neutral density filters if you can. Now, luckily, most cameras that can actually shoot in Canon C-Log2 have built-in NDs, like for example, my Canon C70 and C300. But if your camera doesn't have built-in NDs, like the R5 Mark II, I would highly recommend buying some because the last thing you wanna do is ramp up your shutter speed because that could mess with your motion blur, change your aperture because that could mess with your depth of field or change your ISO because that could greatly affect your dynamic range. So if you are shooting in C-Log2, try and shoot at ISO 800 to get the best footage possible. And to balance that with the amount of light, highly recommend using neutral density filters. Now, when shooting in Canon C-Log2 footage, you'll notice that it's a little bit more grainier than C-Log3 or especially C-Log. And that's just due to how much data the actual C-Log2 is capturing. There's a lot of dynamic range, which means there's gonna be a lot of information in the shadows meaning you're gonna get a little bit more grain. So because of that, I do recommend slightly overexposing your C-Log2 footage. Now, C-Log2 is a very flat profile, so if you're just visualizing it on the back of screen, it's gonna be very difficult to judge your exposure. So highly recommend using some exposure tools to better nail your exposure. You could use your exposure meter, a histogram, waveform, but what I use to get the best results possible is going to be using false color. False color is C-Log2's best friend. And using them in combination with each other means you're going to pretty much nail that exposure every single time. Now, if you don't know how to use false color, go ahead and watch this video here. I've already made a video about how you can use and basically get better exposure with false color. But what you wanna do is when you're using C-Log2, try and aim for the skin tones between 50 to 70 IRE. So that's the green to pink, uh, mid-tones to highlights. That's what I recommend when using in C-Log2. Otherwise, you might end up with slightly over or underexposed footage. But what's great about Canon C-Log2 is it's very flexible, it's very forgiving. So if you slightly over or slightly underexposed, you should be able to correct it. I've worked out that Above three and below three stops seems to be the threshold of what C-Log2 can bring back. So as long as you're within that six stop threshold, you should be okay. But to get the best results possible, highly recommend using false color or waveforms to get the best footage possible. And in most cases, that's about one to two stops overexposed. Okay, so once you've got your footage and you're really happy with it, let's go ahead and jump onto Premiere Pro and quickly show you guys how you can color grade it as well as how you can apply LUTs to get the best results possible in C-Log2. So all I've done to save time is I've imported four different clips into Premiere Pro. So what I did is I went down to London, uh, this was for a lens review, and I shot it on my uh, Canon C70 in C-Log2 Cinema Gamut. So if you're shooting that, this is roughly what your footage will look like. So we've got shot one, which is just a shot of the Tower Bridge. Uh, shot two, which is a little bit closer, also a little bit darker. 
Then we've got shot three, which is the darkest. Again, this is near Tower Bridge, and it's just pointing towards the sun. I was kind of doing like this kind of flare test against the dark uh, buildings you can see. And then lastly, I've got a shot on Tower Bridge shooting below uh, this kind of tugboat pulling some barge of some kind. And again, this is quite a dark clip. So we've got four variations in brightness. Now, when you're color grading, one of the most important tools to have open is your Lumetri scope, which is basically a waveform built into Premiere Pro. Now to get that, all you'll need to do is simply go to Window and then simply drop down to where you can see it says Lumetri Color. Make sure that is turned on as well as Lumetri Scope. Now my Lumetri Scope is here because I use it all the time and this is what it looked like. So for example, if I scan over uh, video one, video two, video three and video four, you can see how each clip has got a different brightness. So for example, this one here is between 40 to 70 IRE. Then we've got the second one here, it's a little bit narrower, so it's slightly darker, but it's got slightly less contrast. Video three, you can see here, it's got a dramatic amount of contrast, but you can see where it falls, so the brightness is obviously where the sun is. And then lastly, we've got, it's quite a dark image, and again, that predominantly falls between 20 to 60 IRE. Okay, so let's go ahead and color grade this one first. So what you wanna do is with your Lumetri color open, you've got your basic correction that you can see here. Now it's broken into two sections. You've got color and light. What I like doing is looking at the Lumetri scope and basically you wanna expand it. So you wanna look at roughly where you want stuff to fall within your image. So on purposely over or on purposely under exposed. So in this example, I want it correctly exposed. So between 50 to 60 IRE. So what I'm gonna do is go to my contrast here bring out my contrast, maybe go to my highlights, bring that up slightly, go to my shadows, bring that down a little bit further, then go to my whites, bring those up, and then also bring those down. Now something also to bear in mind is C-Log2 is quite flat, so there's not a lot of color in it. So to do that, to, to, to fix that, what you can do is go to your saturation here and go ahead and increase that like so. I like increasing it between 125 to 130% there. And then you've also got your white balance if that's something you want to change. Now, there's still not a lot of contrast. And I don't really wanna go further with the contrast slider, I've already gone to 50%. So we can actually use the curves adjustment layer. So we'll turn off basic correction and we can go down to where you can see it says curves and make sure you've got your RGB curves selected. So in here, I wanna add a little bit of brightness to the highlights and really darken those shadows. So you've got your line here. What I'm gonna do is go to my highlights, add a point, raise that up ever so slightly. Then I'm gonna go to my shadows and black areas. I'm gonna go ahead and darken that. And you can see how much contrast we're adding in. And again, always reference your Lumetri scope when it comes to changing the brightness. So for example, I might actually bring down my highlight section here. So it's around 70 IRE and then really bring down my shadows there. So I've got some information in between zero to 10 IRE there. So it's nice and dark, so I'm representing true black, especially in the shadow regions. And as you can see, we have made a dramatic difference to the original clip. And then all you'll need to do is simply apply the same information you've done to clip two. Now to speed that up, we can actually copy and paste those settings. So let's go back to clip one. What I can do is on clip one, right click, we're gonna go up to copy, and then let's go over to clip two, right click, and then go ahead to paste attributes. It will pop up with this attribute table. Make sure you've got your Lumetri color selected, and then simply go ahead and click okay. And we can see it's simply applied all of the settings from one clip to another, really speeding up your editing workflow. What you might need to do is slightly adjust, especially if you're shooting at slightly different brightness. Give you an example. If I go ahead and do exactly the same to uh, video three, right click, Paste attributes, make sure the metric color is selected, okay. Way too dark. So you might have to ever so slightly tweak it. So for example, I might bring up my brightness here in the curves, do something like so. And as you can see, again, always reference your Lumetri scope. And again, you can do that for every single clip, but that's gonna take a lot of time. So how can we speed up our editing workflow? Best way is using LUTs. If you've never used LUTs before, watch this video here, kind of discusses how you can import and apply LUTs within videos. But that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We're gonna dramatically speed up. So what I'm gonna do is go to remove attributes. So I'm just gonna remove all the attributes from here. And instead of applying it clip by clip, we're gonna create an adjustment layer. Now I've already made one here, but to create an adjustment layer, simply go down to your new item icon, go ahead and select adjustment layer, 
and then just simply name it color grading. The reason we're using adjustment layers is because you can drag it over your entire clip. So for example, I'm gonna take that clip there, drag it all the way over, and then drag it across all four clips. Then what we're gonna do is apply settings to this adjustment layer. Now, firstly, we don't wanna create any of these curves adjustment layers. We want to go to creative and actually apply our LUT. So to do that, go into creative, go to look, go to this little drop down, and these are gonna be all of your LUTs. Now, Premiere Pro will have some free ones available. I sell some, which is the ones that I'm gonna be using in this video. So if you wanna support this channel and get these awesome LUTs that I use, they're called Mother Earth LUTs, simply go to the link in the description. So as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of Rec. 709 ones. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of custom ones that I use for sometimes weddings. But the ones that I love the most are Mother Earth. I've got Mother Earth 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the one that I'm gonna be using in today's video is Mother Earth 3. Go ahead and click and it's color graded. Now, obviously this is a little bit too dark. So you have two options here. You can either cut up your adjustment layer and apply it individually, or what you can do is apply just basic adjustments to the clip itself, which is what I'm going to do. Now, you've got a few settings that you can change. So for example, you can change your sharpen, vibrance, saturation, you can either add film fade. You can also change intensity, which is really helpful. So for example, if you're shooting on a slightly different log profile, because all of these are kind of designed for Canon. Maybe you're shooting on Sony and it's got a slightly different color science to it. You can adjust the intensity accordingly. So you can either make it weaker or stronger. But for Canon, particularly C-Log2, 100% intensity seems to work fine. Uh, turn off creative, go to basic corrections, uh, and then apply those minor changes to the individual clips. So for example, again, look at here. I'm gonna go ahead and brighten it up by 0.5 of a stop might brighten up those highlights ever so slightly and just ever so slightly bring down those shadows. And again, go to clip two, do the same thing. Brighten it up slightly, maybe add a little bit of brightness in the highlights, bring down those shadows ever so slightly. And as you can see, it dramatically speeds up your editing workflow. And we're making very minor changes to our sliders here versus when we weren't using a LUT, it takes a lot longer. So you can see LUTs are really good, especially when working in log footage. So again, this one, I can really bring it up. And you can see when I was talking about how forgiving C-Log2 footage is, this clip is a great example. Very dark, but if I bring it up, look how much information is actually stored in those shadows there. Now, obviously there is a little bit of grain, so you might wanna go in and do a little bit of denoise if that's something you want to do. But most of the time, I rarely need to do that. But Again, this is obviously on purpose, it's shot quite dark, so I wanna represent that in my footage. Might bring up my highlights there and bring down those shadows there. And again, last clip here. Again, this is a great example of how forgiving C-Log2 footage is when you are shooting. Bring that up, look how much footage, how much detail is in those shadows. So I might go for something like so, bring up those highlights, maybe ever so slightly bring down those shadows. I might bring up those whites ever so slightly. And again, we can adjust the temperature and tint. You can always go for something. I might go for minus five in this example. Again, the Thames, not famous for very blue water. So uh, I might adjust that. Uh, I might go for minus three instead. But as you can see, it has done a really quick and easy job. And again, if you want to just ever so slightly change the LUT, that's again something you can do. Turn off basic corrections, go to creative. And again, you can adjust it maybe the tealy sky doesn't, it's not your thing, well then go ahead and simply choose Mother Earth 4 and that actually removes that tealy sky. And if I go ahead and play back, you can see the footage is beautifully color graded and I am really happy with the results. So if you are color grading for C-Log2 footage, highly recommend using a LUT or you can simply go ahead and adjust individual clips to get the best results possible. By far my favorite log footage just because of how forgiving it is. Here is the before and here is the after. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So that is how you can expose and color grade your Canon C-Log2 footage in Premiere Pro. And hopefully this video was helpful and explains how you can expose for C-Log2, what settings I actually shoot in when shooting in C-Log2 on my C70, as well as how you can color grade it. So if this video was helpful, make sure to go ahead and write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Video Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.